What if Harry Potter had a real-life counterpart? This concept kicks off The Unwritten, Mike Carey's long-running comic series. I've got all the graphic novels. This is the first one. Those are the rest of them back here. Carey's been a big name in comics for a long time now, most notably creating and writing the series Lucifer, based on Neil Gaiman's Sandman interpretation of the biblical character. Of course, that is most well known as the TV series, which it was adapted into. The TV series and the comic have very little to do with each other. They share some names and a few concepts, but uh, they're very, very, very different. The comic is a lot better. I highly recommend you read that. In The Unwritten, Carrie does a similar fresh take on familiar material. In my last video on coming up with a breakout premise, I gave you Donald Moss's view of originality. For Moss, there are three ways to be original in your premise. You can come at familiar material from a fresh perspective, from a fresh point of view. You can do the opposite of what we expect, situational irony, or you can combine two or more discrete story elements. Carey does all of that in crafting his premise for The Unwritten. First, he takes the idea of the boy wizard. We're all familiar with Harry Potter, right? But this isn't the story of the boy wizard, Tommy Taylor. Carey's story takes place not in that fantasy world, but in the world in which the fantasy books were published. A variation on our modern-day real world. In this imaginary real world, the Harry Potter books also exist, but the Tommy Taylor books dwarf them in popularity. They dwarf pretty much every book since the Bible. Tommy Taylor in this world is a fictional character, the creation of author Wilson Taylor. Our protagonist is Wilson's real-life son, Tom Taylor, who must live with being the namesake and the supposed inspiration of the fictional Tommy. He also has to live with the knowledge that his father abandoned him and disappeared entirely from public life when Tom was only 10 years old. Shortly after the 13th and last Tommy Taylor book was published, a book which ends on a cliffhanger. It's soon revealed that Tom's origins may not be exactly what he thought they were, and the stories and myths that drive the world may be far less fiction than fact. There's a conspiracy that goes back to the dawn of humanity, to the time when the first tales were told, when the first fictional heroes and villains were brought to life. Literally brought to life. Since then, a shadowy cabal has been manipulating stories, in order to control the power structures and direct the unfolding events of the world. Other figures throughout history, storytellers, writers, shapers of myth, have stood against this cabal, telling tales of freedom and rebellion to help counteract the cabal's control. And now Tom, who's not a writer, barely even a reader, and wants nothing to do with his father's legacy, has become a key player in both sides' game. So notice how this premise gives us a fresh perspective, kind of a meta take on the stories that define our culture and our lives. Also, note how it does the opposite of what we expect. Instead of the fantasy hero taking up the mantle and discovering his true power in a magical world, we have an everyman hero in the everyday real world who doesn't want anything to do with being a hero and doesn't even believe in the magic and the forces that are now manipulating him and has been dragged into the story against his will. He doesn't willingly go off to Hogwarts. He's pulled in by both the dark and the light. He does arc and change in his perspective and personality throughout the course of the 11 graphic novels, but even that doesn't go quite the way you'd expect. And then, of course, we have multiple disparate story elements being combined here. Lots of them. 
There's the real life person being dragged into an imaginary fantasy world, a la the isekai idea, if you're familiar with manga and anime. By contrast, we have the fictional characters brought to life in the real world, a la ideas from Cornelia Funk's Inkheart. Or if you're a pretty regular reader, you're probably going to recognize quite a few of Tom's allies and enemies, because they come from works of literature that have been written and been influential over time. And then we also have real-life historical figures. We have historical fiction woven in to this modern-day urban fantasy. Now, the historical figures are mostly authors. The very first graphic novel features appearances from Oscar Wilde, from Mark Twain, and from, most importantly, Rudyard Kipling. And through flashbacks to their time, those figures exude an influence on the modern-day ongoing story. So this comic series has all the elements of a breakout premise, and as comics go, it did break out. It was very successful, if not on the same level as Harry Potter or even Lucifer. Still, it did well. It's a dark fantasy. It's an intriguing mystery tense thriller, a violent horror story, and an inspiring parable on the power of story to shape and change our lives. I highly recommend The Unwritten to anyone who likes good stories, and especially anyone who wants to write them. Thanks for watching all. I hope you take this recommendation to heart, and let me know what else you'd like to hear from me, other works you'd like me to review, other writing lessons you'd like me to cover, put them in the comments below, and like and like the video and subscribe to the channel, all that stuff, all the stuff I'm required to say, please do it, because I really do enjoy making, I really do enjoy making these videos, but, uh, you know, I'm doing it for free right now, and it takes a lot of time and energy to write these scripts and film and edit, and I'm only good at some of those things. So, trying to get better, but I really appreciate all your guys' support. Hitting close to 250 subscribers right now, and growing, growing, growing. And I, again, I appreciate every single one of you. Till next time, good luck and good writing. Peace.